What's up guys and welcome to today's video. I want to start off by kind of apologizing. I got a little bit later start than I originally intended. This morning I kind of played Mr. Catch Up on all the house duties and stuff, which normally isn't that big of a deal, but we've been having a kind of a large issue in here. So if you guys aren't familiar with us or our house or our channel, we have like a pretty much brand new house. It was built like two years ago and believe it or not, we already have termites. We don't ever go in this room because it's the guest room. And we had a pest guy notice that there were some cracks in uh, this like baseboard down here. And it turned out that we had termites all in there that came up from the foundation, which is crazy. Like termites are scary. They eat wood and stuff, right? I really don't know much about them. All I know is that the house should have been treated and that there's this thing, like it's, it's kind of complicated, but there's like a termite bond from the company that treated the foundation because the termites were ones that came from the foundation. They weren't like in the wood or whatever. This is what I've been dealing with all morning. But the company that treated the place doesn't want to do anything because they say we never renewed the bond because they never sent us the letters that they claim they sent us and one person saying one thing and another person saying another thing and it's just it's been a bit of a mess so not complaining I'm sure we'll get it figured out hopefully the termite damage is minimal it's just been one of those days where like things just aren't going as you'd want them to go the homies at Street Faction sent me another set of their brackets same ones that I have in my S13 and Nicole's S13. And even though I know that this bride is bottom out, I was still gonna try to make it work. Spent like an hour on it. And although it may look on this side like it bolts up, the seat is just too narrow for the brackets. So it's gonna be a bit more involved and I can't put the bride seat in right now. It's gonna have to hit the back burner for a while, even though that's what I wanted to do. I should have filmed all my struggling. I also filmed myself. <laughs> or forgot to film myself pulling off the spoiler and test fitting a new spoiler that I got. I'm not gonna spoil the news for you, but that kind of gives you a little idea of what it looks like. What I need though, I don't remember on what form of social media it was. If it was on Facebook, if it was on Twitter, if it was on Instagram, if it was, I don't know what other social media I'm on. If it was on YouTube, someone hit me up from Florida with an R32 white sedan that wanted to trade me a wingless trunk for my trunk with the wing but I don't remember who you are or how you contacted me. So find a way to please contact me because I wanna trade with you. Because the wing that I got that I thought would cover up the holes doesn't cover up the holes. Other than that series of uneventful stuff, the only real things that have gotten done on the skyline today, I had a pretty bad short where my taillights and my cluster lights weren't working and it took Alberto all day and he couldn't figure out where the short was. I just rigged it so the brake lights were constantly on, that way I could drive around at night in the meantime. But um, he just wound up running a new wire, so we're good on that now. I also didn't tell you guys, but with the rear seat in, it did make it so you can virtually not hear the fuel pumps at all, so that's really cool. There were some holes up here from the speakers before, and I just put some like sound deadening there just to kind of obviously like close those holes. And now the noise is virtually, I don't know, we'll turn the car on and see if you can tell, but obviously we're in a garage, so you're not gonna be able to really tell that much. I'll just wait and show you when we drive the car tomorrow. So a company called Ring reached out to me and sponsored this video and sent me one of their video doorbells. And I've heard of these for people using them in areas where they have like a lot of package theft to see if anyone's stealing their packages, but I actually have a different purpose for it. So most of the time throughout the day, we're working in the garage and there's this constant problem where the delivery people come, they knock on the door and they say FedEx or UPS or whatever, and then I run inside to see if it's something that needs a signature. Nine out of 10 times, it doesn't, but that one out of 10 time, I feel like I always miss it and then race car parts get delayed and then builds get delayed. So when the doorbell detects motion or when someone rings it, it notifies me on my phone. And then we can see who's at the door or we could even talk to him. Hey, can you hear me, Nicole? Unfortunately. <laughs> If you didn't notice, in addition to HD video, it also has two-way audio, so we can like talk to whoever's at the door. I just put it in today. It literally took me maybe 10, 15 minutes tops to install, just a couple of wires, literally just like plugged right in. Ring was also kind enough to give me a special offer for you guys on a Ring starter kit right now. The starter kit's really rad. It comes with a video doorbell and a floodlight cam. Great way to start building Ring security around your home. If you want to check it out, just go to ring.com slash LZ. I want to give a massive thank you to Ring for sponsoring this video. I'm very excited to put this this thing to use and once again if you guys want to check it out and take advantage of that special offer it is just ring.com forward slash LZ now seeing as I don't have a ton to talk about I thought I would address a few common questions that I've been seeing over and over again about this build the number one thing everyone's like oh my god go back to stock taillights the taillights you have are hideous these taillights are actually the taillights they come on R32s. They don't have the cool looking ones like you guys are used to seeing on coupes where the paint like covers the taillight and then you only see the circle of the taillight. Believe it or not, when you put those on sedans, they kind of look weird because it has a different like body line with the trunk. So these taillights, I genuinely think look the best. If you are a doubter, Google 
coupe taillights on R32 sedan and you'll see how funky it looks. I'll even put a picture on the screen right now if I remember while I'm editing. It just looks absolutely not good. But I agree with you guys, they look cooler. I'm thinking about just wiring it so my taillights are on all the time because then it kind of looks like the other lights because you have those cool GTR skyline signature circles. Another common thing I'm seeing, which is a very, very cool idea, but unfortunately not really doable, is making this car into a drift taxi and having a back seat where I have, you know, two bucket seats that I can bring people on ride-alongs and stuff. Uh, you see that a lot with JZX 100s and other bigger cars, but this car is honestly not much bigger than like an S13 coupe. It's just a hair longer. This is the legroom that you currently have in the back. There's no way that I. There's no way that I can fit a bucket seat here and safely have someone where their head isn't like pressed up against the roof and their knees aren't like sandwiched into this seat. So this, not a practical drift taxi in my opinion. Cool idea though. Since I mentioned that we're doing a livery on it, I have seen some questions and some comments and some ideas regarding livery stuff. All I can say is, you will like what I'm gonna do with the car. The delivery is almost done already and it's very, well not on the car, but like the actual design phase. It's I could not be more excited for what this car is gonna look like. I mentioned it before, but as of right now, I'm not planning on doing a cage in this car. Like I've said, this is supposed to be kind of like my right-hand drive practice car slash replacement for the S13, so I don't have to keep beating that thing up. So it's gonna be a fun car to take to grassroots events and stuff. And when it comes to like competitions or more serious tracks that require cages, that's when I can utilize the S15. But I really wanna enjoy this car, kinda of like I enjoy the Z, where it doesn't have a cage, it's really easy to just hop in, go drive. It'll have AC, I can drive it around town and enjoy it, but I'm also gonna get down and I'm gonna beat the absolute crap out of it because that's when I have the most fun. Like You guys can clearly see through videos how much fun I have in the Z. If this car can stay together, I will have 10 times more fun in it than the Z just because of how much more rowdy it is, how much more personality it has, and how cool it's going to look. Obviously, it's not going to last forever, and it's probably going to break more often than a stock Z would, so that's when we have the Z as a backup, right? There's logic to this. It may be kind of crazy logic, but it's logic. I also saw some comments about over fenders and stuff on the car. I'm gonna have to do over fenders in the front for clearance when we have angle and have to have the wheels moved out quite a bit. In the rear, I'm just gonna leave a stock body like my S13. I always prefer stock body over having fiberglass in the rear. If it gets smashed up, then we can go fiberglass. Plus for this car, I think the only real over fender is only like 20 or 30 mil. So it's really not like it would add that much more. I can definitely get some more roll out of the tires, but right now we're fitting a 235 in there. And like, I wouldn't want to have to be able to, I don't really need to fit much more than that. The car makes plenty of grip on those tires right now. So while we're out of town, I don't want the progress on the Skyline to come to a halt. So one of the things that Alberto is going to be doing on it is pulling the front subframe so I can get the rack relocated and powder coated. And then I'm also going to be putting an S13 subframe in here. So I have one that uh, Alberto just has to fix the threads for the diff on and the weld in some GK Tech reinforcement plates so I can get that powder coated. And then hopefully when I get back home, we can put the new subframes in and I can do all the GK Tech arms, angle, some new BC coilovers, and then it should be ready for the track other than a hydro speaking of which I want to mock something up real quick I'm gonna be doing the villain setup just like we have on Nicole's car I just really like how it feels and it looks really clean and it's all tucked up nice in there their plate doesn't work on right-hand drive cars but I was actually able to get the pieces that they use to make their plates from them so I can bolt this where the shifter goes on and then have Alberto weld this in place so we can then bolt it to the trans tunnel as well that way we have a nice rigid place to mount the handbrake. However, a new idea that I just got, since we have all that extra room, since the shifters moved far back, and I don't know if we're gonna have enough room for a handbrake there, depending on what seat I end up running. Because if I run a wider seat, the clearance in here is gonna be kinda tight. Although I guess, no, we'd, we'd still be good, I think. I think we'd still be good though. It'd be tight, but I think we'd be good, since I sit pretty far back. But what I was gonna say is, we probably have room to fit it in here if we wanted to, which would be kinda cool. Actually, I don't think it would work because then the master would be in the way of the shifter, so we'd have to do it down here, which I think would be pretty rad. The hydro would fall. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. We're gonna have to worry about this whole situation with the whole R32 fancy cluster thing. Maybe we would cut this handle down to be a little bit lower. I don't need it to be super high in this car. We'll figure that out another day. I'm getting wrapped up in stuff that I shouldn't be getting wrapped up in right now because there's no point. Tomorrow, we're gonna go get the AC charged on this thing so we can cruise around town more often because Florida is brutal right now and driving around a car without AC isn't very fun. That's why I don't really drive around my S13 if you notice. Oh yeah, that and the fact that its head is lifted right now. So yeah, we gotta fix that too. One thing at a time, we're focusing on the R32 right now. Wanna get that done, 
I want to get Nicole's car done enough so we can get it to paint. And then I want to get my S13 back together. Maybe, just maybe, all three cars will be in quotations done at once. Stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit all over the place. I know, I'm sorry. Blame it on the termites. I'll see you guys tomorrow.